This wonderful photo was taken during the filming of Neighbors. You can tell by the costumes they're wearing. That's Buster's father, Joe, uh, standing next to him. And they're looking south, uh, pretty much where the podium is uh, over there. So they're, they're standing on, on El this is Eleanor. They're standing on Eleanor and they're looking south. The studio was built in 1914 by the Climax uh, Film Company. This is a view, this is south. Here's the corner bungalow office. They had a little studio lawn next to the office. And then there, there was another bungalow. And that's where they would develop and edit the film. And you can see the background. The main shooting stage had no roof. Uh, Buster made even films like The Goat. He filmed at a studio that had no roof. So in 1916, Chaplin signed with the Mutual Film Company, becoming the highest paid entertainer in America, or in the world. He needed a place to make his films. So the, the Mutual Company hired the studio for him. So Chaplin spent two years here filming. This is the fireman. Uh, this is looking south down Lillian Way. You can actually read Eleanor on the street sign. But if you look down, Ellen, and that's the corner bungalow office. But if you look down Eleanor at the time, you'd see the Sunday, Sunday School building and you can see the chimneys and buildings of the Vine Street Elementary School down the street. So keep that in, image in mind. Uh, eight years later, in Sherlock Jr., Buster's following Ward Crane. This is also looking south down Lillian Way. There's the Vine Street Elementary School in the background. You can see here there's now uh, dressing room windows that Buster had built. And also on the other side of the street are these two distinctive bungalows. I'm going to mention them in a minute. We're now looking east down Eleanor. So in Convict 13, Buster runs into a, a street sign, and that's pretty, right where that stop sign is. Like I said, this is looking east. So this house is on Vine and Eleanor. And on the other side of the street are these two bungalows. Those are the two bungalows that were in the Sherlock Jr. shot. I'll explain how that's possible. Four years later, same view, looking east. This is Sherlock Jr. There's the house on Vine and Eleanor. Those two bungalows have been replaced by this big cement building. It's the California Laundry building. And Buster not only did all his own stunts, here he did a stunt for another actor. He fell off the motorbike and landed right there uh, in the intersection behind us. So what about those bungalows? So here they are in Convict 13. When the big California Laundry Company came in, they bought the whole block. They owned the bungalows. So for some reason, they moved them south one block onto Romain. They left, they left those bungalows there for like three months. Then they moved them again to Lillian Way. So, there's, so they're, they're in two different films. This, this is an aerial view, a 1922 aerial view. There's the northernmost bungalow. That bungalow was moved a third time in 1926, 11 miles from here, and it's still standing on McKinley Avenue. And the reason we know this is that Los Angeles has all their building permits online. So I, I have the building permit for when they built the studio, and I have all the permits for when these buildings were moved, block to block to block. It's crazy, but it's still standing. That's an undertaking back then, too. Very briefly, just to get your bearings, this is an aerial view, 1922, looking south. So we're, we're standing here. That's the corner bungalow office. That's Lillian Way. So here's the lawn next to the bungalow. Uh, here's the other bungalow where they would develop and edit the film. On the corner was the studio barn. At the end of the street is the barber shop and the coffee shop. Across the street from the studio in Coenga was a small vacant lot. You can see there's a little cube shaped set. They built that for the blacksmith. This big open area, that was the back lot. That's where they would film the large uh, sets. You can see the shooting stage is now closed over. These are administration buildings for the Metro studio. So this is one of the Metro buildings across the street. And then in the upper left is the Vine Street School and there is the Sunday School building. And here are those two little bungalows again. So anyway. Can't get rid of them down nope. there. <laughs> Buster with, uh, with uh, Roscoe and Joe. But if you stood on the lawn and looked north, across the street, you would see the Coenga Valley Lemon Growers Warehouse. And I, I've marked this corner of the storage shed. So we're, we're on the studio lawn. So during the goat, when Buster Buster climbs on the clay statue and it collapses beneath him. This little faux park was a set they built on the studio lawn. It's looking north. 
That's the same corner of the storage shed across the street. The Herrick Library has got a great wide view photo of this and you can see very clearly that it was filmed and the shed is in the background. Then lastly, uh, during the Scarecrow, Roscoe, Roscoe's dog, Luke, is chasing Buster, so Joe buys all these uh, first aid supplies. And he's sitting down on the curb right here at, at Eleanor, and behind him is the same storage shed for the lemon warehouse. You can see stacks of lemon crates behind Joe's head. This is from the blacksmith. We are looking west down Eleanor towards Coenga. This is the Keaton Studio barn. This is that lovely white, um, I don't know what brand of car it is, but it's, it's soon going to be demolished. <laughs> At the end of the street, there is Saul Weissman's Barbershop. Next door, you can read the sign. It's the Coffee Cup Cafe, and it has, these are spelled with K's, it has clean, quick cooking. And it also says steaks, chops, and oysters. So on Sherlock Jr., Buster escapes by uh, diving through a hoop that has an old lady's garment in it. So he's, Buster is walking along that sidewalk towards us from the corner of Coenga, and we know that. You can see the oysters sign from the Coffee Cup Cafe behind it. Yeah. So I mentioned, this was, the, this was the studio. Across from the studio, there was a small vacant lot, and they used it frequently to film. So they found this new footage from the blacksmith. There's a joke Buster's hiding on this automobile billboard. Um, the Oakland Motor Company advertised their car as the Sensible Six. Buster's is the Senseless Six. <laughs> but we're looking. If we were looking, Buster would be right there looking across the street. What's wonderful about this, there's a reverse angle view. This is taken from the lot, looking towards us. There's, there's the bungalow where they would develop and edit the film. There's the big shooting stage. You can have, you see it has a big sliding barn door. So this is one of the few times ever that Keaton's studio appears on film. And it's in this newly recovered footage from the blacksmith. So I mentioned there's a small lot. The south end of the small lot had a bungalow, 1007 Coenga. So in this scene from the Scarecrow, Big Joe's tips over the Model T. Again, we're looking right across the street at the lot. There's that bungalow. During college, uh, they built a two-story dormitory set. Again, right here, these hooligans are gonna toss Buster in a blanket, but they're to the south, on the left, is 1007 Coenga, the same bungalow. And then, one of the final scenes from Steamboat Bill Jr., it could be literally the final scene he made at the studio. During the hurricane, he climbs over the gate and it swings open, so he ends up on the same side of the fence as where he started. <laughs> There's that little lot across the street. There's that bungalow, 1007 Coenga. Here's an aerial view. We're looking northwest. There's the little vacant lot. There's 1007 Coenga. On the north end, there were these two duplexes. One duplex had twin porches. The other duplex had a big common porch. So if you can keep that in mind. During the boat, when they're, when they're pulling the boat out from under the house, there across the street, there are the duplexes with the twin porches. So they're, they're right there. When the hooligans, during college, when the hooligans toss Buster in a blanket and they, and they disperse, they're running north, they're running by those duplexes, there are the twin porches, there's the big common porch, there's the side of Saul Weissman's barbershop. And I pointed out that tiny little cube-shaped set they built for the blacksmith. This is it, this is newly, newly found footage from the blacksmith looking north of Coenga. There are the porches of the, of the bungalows, there's the full side of the barbershop. You can even read barbershop. Um, but this view is looking north up at Coenga. I also mentioned this corner was the empty lot where they built the large sets. Again, this photo is looking northwest. So that's Coenga. This is Romaine. You can see the guard towers for the Convict 13 prison set. They also built, Buster built a horseshoe tenement set for uh, neighbors. So the, the gallows for Convict 13, it's looking south. These were uh, metro building, buildings on Coenga, south, down the street. There's 
again, it was filmed right here in this corner. When they, when they pull the boat out and the boat and the house demolishes, that was built in this corner as well. We're looking south at the house. It was built right there in the corner. And as I said, Chaplin, Chaplin filmed her too. So when he, when he filmed Easy Street, he, fil he built a similar horseshoe-shaped tenement set. So all the wonderful scenes in Easy Street, when Chaplin pulls the gas lamppost over Eric Campbell's head and knocks him out, it was filmed right there. The crazy revolving collapsing house for one week was built on a metro lot two blocks south of here. We're not going to walk there, it's, but it was two blocks south. This is from the Blu-ray, but you can see over the fence uh, this bungalow, 815 Coinga, this bungalow peeking over the fence. Later in one week, when uh, Big Joe Roberts is delivering the piano, he's walking towards us. He's walking north up Coinga, and there in the background is 815 Coinga. The reason why I'm mentioning that is that 815 Coenga is still standing. It still looks the same. If you have time later today or just in general, go down two blocks and look out 815 Coenga. That house appears twice in one week and it's still standing. Here's another aerial photo. This is looking southeast. So we're standing, we're standing at this corner. That's Coenga going south. We're standing right here. You'll see there's this unusual set that has four levels of windows. Here's one of the uh, administration buildings for the Metro Studio. Back there is the Vine Street School. Here's the Sunday School building. And these sets here on the Metro lot, they show up in cops. They appear in many scenes in cops. So I pointed out that set. There's wonderful new footage from My Wife's Relations where Buster performs this stunt. He swings awning to awning from the fourth floor down to the ground uh, towards the end of this newly found footage from My Wife's Relations. It is obviously built on this set, which is filmed right here. So before we turn the corner, in college, uh, Buster is, doesn't want Snitz Edward, the dean, to know that he's trying out for sports, so he hides his face they bump into each other. This is the corner of the Keaton studio. This is Romaine, looking east down Romaine. So Buster, when, when we turn the corner, Buster will be walking towards you. But you can see across the street, the, uh, the Metro Administration building. So let's go around the corner. At the end of college, Buster has to run to rescue his girl. So there's a, a wonderful tracking shot in college. Buster runs around the corner from Lillian onto Romain. You can see at the beginning of the shot, the Vine Street School. Buster runs around the corner towards us along the length of the administration building. And in this tracking shot, you can see how, how much of the building appears in the film. Now Metro, Metro stopped operating here in 1924. They moved to Culver City to become part of MGM. They left the buildings behind. So this is only three years after they moved but I think it's interesting, the building already looks run down. In just three years, it kind of looks run down. But it was, the building was right here, and Buster was running towards us. I'm pointing out the, uh, the Sunday School building. It, it stood right here in the corner of uh, El, uh, Romaine and Lillian Way. But that Sunday School porch, that's what Buster used for the opening wedding scene in one week. And what I find so much fun is that here's, here's the, the church there was the studio. So just think about it. They put on their costumes, they put on their makeup, and they walked here. No one drove here. And even the, even the cameramen, they probably carried their equipment because it, it's too short. You know, would you, would, would you put it on a truck and drive here? No. So I don't know it's, it's a fun little detail. But for me, knowing that they literally just walked here, um, that's kind of a fun little detail. So for the balloonatic, the balloon launch, was staged right here behind me. So this is looking north. There's the uh, the California Laundry Building. These are those duplexes. So they moved them from here to here to here. And like I said, the last one has moved a third time. So this is a this is a shot from the Balloonatic. And there's so much detail you can see. This is the Keaton shooting stage. This is looking north. That's that's Lillian Way. That's the Keaton shooting stage. These are the Keaton dressing room windows. That's the back of the Keaton studio sign. 
you can see the clock tower of the warehouse. This was built in 1922. There's a construction crane, and they built a larger extension a few years later. But at the time, they, were, they only built the original building, but you can see the clock tower there very clearly. Uh, so that's one little landmark that's still here. All right, we're going to walk up Lillian to the corner of Lillian and Eleanor. Anyway, Buster's riding towards us. Behind, you can see the Vine Street School there behind him. And off camera to the right is the studio. So he's probably just in the middle of this block coming towards us on the motorcycle. Um, but you wouldn't know watching the film that he was, he was going right by his own studio. So that's the corner, that's the main corner of the studio. So this is how it looked. The, I found the demolition permit. It was, it was demolished in 1931. His studio was too small. It wasn't feasible to try to convert his studio to make talking pictures, so they demolished it. But anyway, this, this is Eleanor, that's Lillian Way, and this corner is, is that corner right there. I think, I think we'll stay here. <laughs> so in, in the Scarecrow, Buster and Joe have this rural country cottage in the middle of nowhere. Where did they build the set? That was a vacant lot. They built it right there, Katy Corner from the studio. Again, they put on their makeup and they walked across the street. These buildings in the background are on Santa Monica Boulevard. They're not there anymore, but we're looking. This set was pretty much on that corner and we're looking in that direction. So I mentioned uh, in, in the, the Scarecrow, you can see this uh, the lemon storage shed. Anyway, here's the north end of the storage shed. So again in the Scarecrow, if you can picture where they built the cottage, the cottage was on this corner. So if this is looking west. This is looking west. That's Lillian Way. So if you were standing in the middle of that corner somewhere and looking west behind the, the uh, cottage set, what would you see? You'd see the north end of the storage shed. And that's, that's where it is. In the goat, there's a scene in the goat where Buster lures Joe under a dump wagon and he drops a load of rocks on him. So that was filmed. I kept pointing out the north end of the storage shed. The north end of the storage shed appears in that scene. So we're looking, it was filmed looking this way. The north end of the storage shed was there. And right around here is where Buster dropped the load of rocks on Joe, right around where that car is. A little bit later in the scene, you now Buster conveniently checks for signs of life. And behind him, you can, you can read Cahuenga Valley Lemon. Um, <laughs> So again, it was filmed, filmed right here. So during, during the goat, uh, a, a bunch, Buster lures a bunch of policemen into the back of a moving van. He locks them in the moving van and drives off. So here's, here's Buster. This is after the van dro drove off. So he's standing in front of the window beneath the A. This window on the far right, they turn into a doorway, but Buster's standing under the A of the Broadwater. When Buster comes to rescue Virginia Fox, the, the man is giving her a hard time, a policeman comes to check out what's going on. That scene was filmed on this corner. The cop is walking from, he's walking from Santa Monica down Lillian Way towards us. You can see there's a very large picture window here. That's, that's where that billboard is. You can see the brick details on either side. So that billboard is where there used to be a large picture window. But this cop is walking towards us. And then lastly, Buster is standing here. He's standing, I guess, beneath the E. But there's a shot. Um, anyway, thank you very much. I literally have to run and start the next tour. But thank you so much I, for being patient. Thank you.